Hi, we're Eric and Linda, and we're the creators of Fix the World and Make Money, and we're very excited to show you the episode about Dr. Bronner's. If you want to watch this 25-minute episode a little bit later, please subscribe to our channel. Enjoy the episode. The median wage in America has stagnated and the minimum wage has declined by 30%. And you know, this is ridiculous. Everybody who works a regular 40 hour a week job should be able to afford to feed their families. Everything we purchase has some human dimension. Was that labor respected or was it exploited? At the end of the day, this company is all about like, celebrating humanity. It was a $4 million company, now it's a $100 million company. And David and Mike have done that together as brothers, and it's remarkable. Dr. Bronner's started as a family soap making tradition and grew into a multi-million dollar business. It was founded by the German Jewish soap maker, Emanuel Bronner who immigrated to the United States just before the outbreak of the Second World War. He followed the events from a distance and was deeply moved by the horrors. But the war didn't turn him into a bitter man. He continued to believe that people were fundamentally the same, a vision that would form the basis of Dr. Bronner's, a soap business that's still more focused on doing good than raking in big profits. And ironically, that very philosophy has contributed tremendously to Dr. Bronner's financial success. Today, the company is run by two of Emmanuel's grandsons, David and Mike Bronner. Welcome to San Diego, California. All right, you want to make a mouth with this? Okay, that's we not. We can eat him. Eat that, but what is it? It's red. We can eat him. We can eat it, but you know what it is. What's it called? I know it looks kind of weird. This one looks weird, but it is a. <laughs> straw raspberry. That's a strawberry. <laughs> you look at how our soap even started. It was my grandfather talking in auditoriums about his philosophy and people coming to get the freebie soap he was selling or handing out on the side. My granddad was having these incredible experiences of, of love and oneness, and people were gathering to buy the soap and weren't really sticking around to hear what he had to say or, or really paying any attention which for him was number one. I mean, the soap was kind of secondary. So he started putting what he had to say on the labels of our soap. 3,000 years ago, Moses said, every human being is responsible for his action, or that being is still a beast, not yet human. He developed quite a following. Even a guy was crucified in Chicago in like 46 or something, which really got him on the authority screen and he was arrested and thrown in an insane asylum. Then subjected to electroshock, which he um, blamed for his blindness, which his eyesight deteriorated by the late 60s. He was totally blind. Through no fault of his own, he was persecuted and taunted. Luckily, after several attempts, he finally escaped the institution in Illinois and fled to sunny California. Here, he restarted his soap brand, which was temporarily put on hold. He didn't understand just how busy the, the labels were getting and just how small the, the text was getting. You know, it's like our labels were designed by a blind man. You know, it's pretty, pretty amazing. He actually made soap to sell the label, not a label to sell the soap. Usually you make a label to sell the product. And so his was very much the opposite. So now you ask, like, is it the are people coming for the product or the message? OK. So me and Chris are there. Maya's here. Nah, it's Carly. Pure love puppy. Mm -hmm. Oh my gosh. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Puppy's a little scared of cameras. I know. I had somewhat limited contact with my granddad. My dad and my granddad didn't have the best relationship growing up. My husband and I were, were not necessarily raised in ideal families, at least not the ones you see on television in the 1960s. We had to get it. We had to understand that this you know, most important thing was uniting the spaceship Earth, you know? And as a kid, you're just like, you know, what? My grandfather, you know, had this vision, much of it born out of the Holocaust. He came from a German-Jewish soap-making family. 
like many bourgeois Jews, was like, the madness is gonna blow over, we'll, we'll ride this out. And then the Nazis nationalized factory in like 41. They were deported in 42. The last letter he had ever gotten from his dad said, you know, you were right. And uh, never heard from them again. Yeah, I'm just gonna, I'm gonna be a little conservative. Welcome to my house. It's uh, pretty normal. <laughs> um, obviously taken over much more by, by kids stuff these days. The one thing I knew was I did not want to work for my dad or, you know, work for the family company. Not that my, you know, my dad's great. It was just like this, not, you know, no, I'm going to go do my own thing. And after college, uh, went to Amsterdam, I had a Euro pass, meeting amazing people and just really being exposed to all kinds of different ways of thinking and looking at the world and having some really big psychedelic episodes that, you know, really turned me inside out and, you know, made me realize we are, we live in this spiritual mystery and that my granddad actually was really on it. David has always been very compassionate. I think he was maybe three years old. I had a jacket that had a rabbit fur collar. His comment was, oh, mom, I hope they waited until the rabbit died before they took his fur. David's compassion for all living creatures made him switch to a vegan diet. Plus, his company became a voice for animal welfare by donating money to charitable causes and awareness films, such as Cowspiracy, a reinterpretation of the All One vision. Um, you know, Cowspiracy really went big with the, its Netflix launch. You know, like the theatrical release, of course, hopefully is going to be really impactful, but that the uh, you know, like the Netflix, and when you when it starts streaming, like that's when it can really, you know, do damage and get viral and all that. Absolutely, yeah. No, that's a big part of the discussion. Okay, bye. <laughs> Thanks. I will. So, you know, my brother is so passionate, and I know in order to argue with him, you have to go to a place where it gets pretty ugly. Um, but the good thing about that is that it always ends up, um, we always, end, oh, sorry, go ahead, um, is we have big blowouts, but, you know, we are even closer afterwards. You know, whatever we were fighting about, you know, we're very invested in our company and our different projects and ideas. And once in a while, uh, well, maybe more, Pretty frequently, we would just go at it. He'd be like, oh, dude, you're a motherfucking activist with your head in the clouds. You're going to run the motherfucking company in the ground. And on my side, I'd be like, dude, you're like a fucking soulless businessman. You don't give a fuck about our mission. Like, you know what I mean? So it was just like a ridiculous kind of stereotyping of each other. I don't think I can count on more than two fingers the times I've left work angry at my brother. Everything is all the way, right? Either activist to the max or um, Buddha to the max, and uh, sometimes you have to, you have to, you have to what is it, poke the bear to get to the Buddha. <laughs> uh, you know, I forgot, I forgot a towel. It was never the intent for both brothers to work together. Mike first had his own urge to see the far corners of the world, which came as quite a surprise, not least to himself. You know, I was always the one who would get just a little bit homesick at summer camp, but I'd never really kind of gotten off and just tried to make a life on my own terms. And so I decided to go to Asia and teach English for three years. I kind of felt like I broke away. So my dad was basically running Dr. Bronner's because my granddad's failing health. And then a month later, he was diagnosed with stage four lung cancer. I decided to, to stay in Japan because I wasn't ready to come and, and be part of the whole family dynamic. I mean, it was a really traumatic time. So I let my dad know, hey, I'm ready to come in and help. And I guess first, like how to just do basic operations, basic inventory control, make sure you got the right materials, the right quality and right price. And you're making the right soap all the time, every time. And My grandfather passed away in 1997, um, my father in 1998. It wasn't until talking to my brother and I realized that I wanted to pursue something more. And so I came back living with my mom in her house, 
working out of an office in her house with my brother, sharing the same computer. So it was quite a change. To make hemp oil out of the seeds. When I go on business trips, I go to different countries and I usually stay, you know, at reasonably nice hotels. Sometimes when my brother goes on business trips, uh, he stays in jail. <laughs> <laughs> Mike's connection to Asia, however, never vanished. And today he's showing a Japanese delegation around the factory. His comment about his brother's jail time was not some practical joke. So hemp was coming up globally, and we had you know, started using hemp seed oil in the soap, and then Bush started making moves to ban hemp, and we're gearing up for a fight, and then 9-11 happened. So they went after industrial hemp, they went after all the medical marijuana dispensaries. They were just, you know, felt like they'd been given a blank check and just accomplished their agenda. It's like the most absurd example of an out-of-control drug war that is placing a non-drug industrial agricultural crop in the same schedule as you know, heroin and LSD. It's ridiculous. OK, and we're going to cut this way. And then that's our cannabis wall. I guess, look at that. It's all organized. So this is me planting hemp seeds on DEA's lawn and getting arrested in front of the White House, harvesting hemp. Well, technically, I got I don't know, 10 pounds of marijuana here, according to the you know, ridiculous policy in this country. Um, but, you know, there's no drug value whatsoever in these plants. You know, it's amazing. The U.S. market for hemp seed food and hemp seed products is the largest in the world. And American farmers are systematically cut out of this global booming industry. Take a look at David Bronner as firefighters cut him out of his cage, ending his protest. Like, the first big victory was February 6th. We got the Ninth Circuit to back DEA down, and it was like the first time DEA had ever gotten back down. Um, this was the shovel that I dug up the DEA's lawn with and planted hemp seeds. Actually, it wasn't. It was a replica of the shovel. DEA actually confiscated our shovels, but there was a message because I knew the DEA was going to do that. So here's a message to the DEA. American farmers shall grow hemp again. Reefer madness will be buried. Kabam! Marketing was always a dirty word. You know, marketing insinuated that you were selling somebody an illusion and kind of tricking them into buying something. We do a lot of earned media work, which is getting the media to cover our brand and talk about it. We have a lot of stories to tell as a brand, and so we feel like that's a little more authentic than advertising because you're not paying for the coverage, you're earning it. Does it build the brand and reputation? It does, because it, it, it um, resonates with people. Yeah, so I'm gonna be... Yeah, yeah. Wow, you got something else? Shit. So my, this is in honor of my dad. So my dad developed firefighting foam for um, actually Monsanto's firefighting division back in the day. It came from the place of taking my grandfather's soap, my dad's technology, and making that a vehicle for showering, for enjoyment, for celebration, and just kind of bringing that vibe to the people. Trials, troubles, tribulations, such has never been made for. When the angels pour upon us, their fires are bred forevermore. When the fire comes down from heaven, and the blood shall fill the sea. I'll be carried home by angels and forever with him be. The beast with horns will come upon you, one with seven, one with ten. Men will cry unto the mountains, they pray to die but cannot be. 
This is not about selling soap. This is about changing the world. This is an activist engine to promote the all one vision and to do good shit in the world. Okay, so here's where the weirdos live. <laughs> you mean those weirdos? <laughs> My mom was, was like, put on some clothes. And I'm like, mom, stop antagonizing me. More can come off. <laughs> yeah, I'm the, currently the only in-house graphic designer. We're making a special version for our Fair, Fair Pay Today campaign. You know, a lot of people who are living on minimum wage, which, which is currently $7, can't make ends, ends meet. They can't um, afford the rent, they can't afford food. And we're just trying to do our, our part to uh, raise awareness about the whole thing. Right now we're fighting for the fair minimum wage. We've had 50 years of massive economic growth and shareholder profits and executive pay have exploded, but the median wage in America has stagnated and the minimum wage has declined by 30% from its high point in the late 60s. And this is ridiculous. Everybody who works a regular 40 hour a week job should be able to afford to feed their families. Every time we sell a bottle, a percentage of that goes towards making that a reality all over the country. We're all about really investing in the number one thing that makes Dr. Bronner's what it is, and that's our people. We cap our salaries at five to one of the lowest paid full-time worker. All of the benefits that the employees have did come from my husband. He also started with uh, the health insurance and dental insurance. And this is not only for the employees, but it is for their entire family. We provide uh, childcare. Every year when we go to renew our benefits, our insurance benefits, they usually tell us, hey, nobody else does what you guys are proposing to do. Are you sure you want to do this? In return, you know, the morale is super high. Turnover is super low and they give 110 percent. It's not so much the benefits but knowing that they really care about you and support you. We have people here who have worked here 30 plus years and their children, their mothers, uncles, aunts work here. Let us be generous, fair, and loving to Spaceship Earth and all its inhabitants, for we're all one or none. All one. We can't get together anymore. Everybody's so darn busy. We used to get together every Sunday, but now it's, you know, we're, we're lucky if it's twice a month. So why don't I talk to mom one more time? Here, Mike. No, we're not. We're not. We're calling off we the presence. Well, I think that you'll find that there's more business decisions that are easier to make than what they were going to celebrate birthdays on. We gave a million dollars to labeling GMOs easier than we did celebrating birthdays. So, um, you know, the family business, it's it's great. You know, obviously, I have my brother's back. He has my back. My mom. There's a bond there that goes beyond dollars and cents and soap and raw materials. <laughs> Any disagreement we may have at work tends to come out after you've had a couple of drinks and your tongue is loose, you know. <laughs> Next thing you know, your voices are raised and can be quite colorful. Michael, what's up? Okay. This is my brother-in-law, Michael. He's our chief of operations. Yeah, real quick, I want to tell you, did you, did you hear like what Target ordered for lotion? No. For next week, they ordered 2,074 cases. Oh my gosh. I don't know if that's realistic. So we sold the Target uh, seven and a half months of lotion in five weeks. That's crazy. Yeah. Wow. Hi, Mike. I'm just with Darcy. Hey, um, I'm, I'm on my way up to Kiyomi's house. Oh, yeah. Well, Ryan was going to drive me anyway home. Oh. So one way or the other, I'm drinking. Actually, I should. I think I should drive. Where did they bring it up? Bam! Mm -hmm. So you off school? Yep. 
How's your day going? Good, good. I, uh, I'm on video. Part of the reason why Dr. Bronner's has been so successful in growing internationally in such a short period of time is because Mike is the primary driver in the company for the international sales. So in a way, he's kind of the brand's international ambassador. If we see a business partner that we haven't seen in a year or something, you know, he'll remember something about the fact that they did this, you know, local charity campaign two years ago, and he'll ask them about it. He genuinely loves people, and that comes out. Since I do not like being out in the forefront, what David does is scary to me because he speaks on panels, he's gone to Washington, D.C., and he fights for what he believes in. It wasn't until like in the last 10 years where I realized just how shy he is and that despite this shyness, he gets out of this comfort zone and he fights for what is right. I'm a very non-confrontational person. When he does all of this, I just really uh, marvel and remember, I'm still his mother. Vegetarian about it. The eat less, me and be, make sure it's correct. You know, and we support everybody. So. He can educate himself with like these chemical dictionaries and encyclopedias and then argue with top chemists about organic integrity and win. There's an old saying that more companies get into trouble because of tremendous growth than any other way. The first time it grew 20%, we had a tiger by the tail. And when a company grows, it needs a lot of finances. And so we had to do a lot of scrambling to get money into the company to sustain the growth. Being independent and being family owned, means they're not beholden to this emphasis or priority to make a profit. Your primary point of uh, operation is to maximize shareholder return. That's your number one responsibility. And if you're not doing that, shareholders can sue you and say like, stop giving my profits away. You're not maximizing my return. A benefit corp is a new corporate form. It's for profit, but it's kind of a hybrid of a for a nonprofit and enables you to give away your profits. There's so much connection we have with so much of what's gone before, what's happening now, and you know where we want to go. And so that's why sometimes yeah. I spend a lot of time talking yeah. about this one picture of my brother or one picture from Heilbrunn. It's just, it just, there's really so much connection yeah. here. Yeah. No, I, don't it, I don't have a line. Maybe we got lamps. We need lamps. Who's got lines? To sell shares would, would really cripple the uh, ability of the, the family and the company to do what it does. Outside money comes with strings. So we are able to do what we want, when we want, but we do, of course, listen to our advisors. You can frame any company as a family business or an independent business, um, but that, that on its own doesn't make it inherently good or inherently progressive. If you're not careful to define something with actual substance, family business is just going to be another, another buzzword. Old-fashioned business beliefs dictate that in order to gain wealth, someone else should pay the price. Dr. Bronner's demonstrates that we can do things differently and that we can all benefit if we treat one another with dignity and respect. All one does not mean that there is no difference in this world. It just means that underneath it, there's something that brings us all together. If we can expand our concept of family in the world, there is more joy to be had, you know? What we do in our everyday lives, you know, reflects and honors this deeper connection. I mean, we all, we all got to do business, but, you know, life is about a lot more. And we're part you're integrated of a, you know, a much larger society and environment. Uniting the spaceship Earth seems like an end goal of epic proportions. If we bring the story closer to home, it seems as if the Dr. Bronner family finally themselves have learned what it means to be one. I realize that my, my kids, of course, are all mature, they're all old, and now they know my faults and love me anyway.
Yes, you made it till the end credits. If you want to see more of these uplifting stories, then please subscribe to our channel. Next week, we'll have an episode about female-friendly pornography. Ooh, sounds exciting. See you then.